Yep, I'm just waiting for uh, one more audio to come through and then we'll get started. Yes, sir. All right, ma'am, on the Samsung, what's your name? Amy Davis. Okay. And so I am calling the following cases to 302706LT, parties present on that. We have uh, attorney for plaintiff Hunters Glenn, as well as defendant Miss Davis. Uh, the other cases that are ready, 2302705LT, uh, attorney for plaintiff Hunters Glenn is here, as well as Mr. Brecht. And then 2302704LT, attorney for plaintiff, as well as I believe, uh, and I do need to clarify, but Miss Adams, are you on this case? Yes, I am. I do, I, okay, that's I see Christopher Adams, Trevor Thieker are here as well as um, uh, Miss Adams. All right, so everybody's here for the same thing. Uh, you're here for a landlord tenant case. This is a very brief hearing today. Uh, essentially, what I'm going to do here is uh, share my screen, and then everyone will be able to. Uh, 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 here and see the presentation. I simply need to advise you of certain rights that you have because uh, we uh, are involved in landlord tenant case, uh, but then essentially we'll be all set. And so essentially what I need to explain to you is this. That uh, you do have the right to proper venue. If your residence is not located in the County of Allegan, you need to make the court aware of that at your next hearing. That you do have the right to a jury trial, um, that if, and that you uh, can request a jury trial, but you must do that within five days of the next court date. That anyone who is a veteran, there may be uh, special things in place for you. If that's true, you want to get a hold of. Uh, the uh, Michigan Veterans Trust Fund. And at any point in time, if you and your landlord come to an agreement, conditional dismissal can be filed uh, at that next hearing. The two things I do need to explain to you. One is, you do have the right to the representation by an attorney, and that even if you cannot afford an attorney, Legal Aid of West Michigan may be able to represent you free of charge. If you're interested in looking into that, you should follow up with a phone call to Legal Aid. The phone number here was in the paperwork that was sent to you by court. The second thing is to advise you that um, On Point, uh, which used to be CMH, they have certain grants and funding set aside to assist people. You may qualify for one or more of those programs. Again, if you're interested in looking into this, you should follow up with a phone call to On Point. That phone number was in the paperwork sent out to you by court. And so at this point in time, uh, I just need to ask the defendants one at a time, make sure they understood the few things there that I just explained to you, Mr. Brecht. Yes, Your Honor. And uh, Ms. Davis. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Thieker. Yes, sir. And the Adams? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. That, that's all we have to do for today. Like I said, it's a very quick hearing. You guys will all get new notice of the next court date. That will get sent out to you in the mail. Landlord tenant is usually always Fridays at 1 p.m. So please pay attention to that next notice. It will be a different Zoom number than mine. If you come to my room next time, you'd be in the wrong room. Uh, but with that, I can go ahead and release parties. Thank you.
And ma'am, I don't know what's going on with this case, but the attorney for plaintiff has not shown up and defendant has not shown up. So there's nothing more for me to do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Please, Mr. Yorks, I'm just waiting for uh, some others. Yes, Your Honor. All right, gentlemen, we are here uh, for the same uh, type of hearing. It's a real quick hearing today. It's landlord tenant, uh, but it's mostly just to advise you as defendants of certain rights that you have calling the following cases 2302710LT. Uh, parties for that, attorney for plaintiff, as well as uh, the uh, defendant on that one, Mr. McDonald, and the other case, 2302713LT, attorney for plaintiff, Hunters Glenn, and Mr. Yorks on that one. So uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, show you guys, I'm going to share my screen so you'll be able to see uh, the uh, slideshow uh, that I need to explain uh, to you guys. Uh, like I said, it'll be real quick. Be all set. Uh, essentially, because you're here for a landlord tenant case, what I need to advise you is you do have the right to proper venue. So if your residence is not in Allegan County, you do need to inform the court of that. Uh, you also do have a right to a jury trial. You must request that demand within five days uh, after your next landlord tenant case. If either of you have been in the armed forces, you may want to contact Michigan Veterans Trust Fund. Uh, they may be able to assist you. If you and your landlord come to a separate or side agreement, that is usually always acceptable for court, inform court at the next hearing. And here are the two things I need to explain to you, gentlemen. You do have the right to the assistance of an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, Legal Aid of West Michigan may be able to represent you free of charge. If you're interested in looking into that, you should contact Legal Aid of West Michigan. That phone number was in the paperwork that was sent out to you by court. The second thing is that On Point has certain grants and funding set aside to assist people during this time. You may qualify for one or more of those programs. If you're interested in looking into that, you should follow up with a phone call to Legal Aid. Uh, that phone number was also in the paperwork that was sent out to you by court. And so now I'll just ask you one at a time, make sure you understood those few rights that I just explained. Mr. McDonald? Yes, I did, Your Honor. And Mr. Yorks, if you could take yourself off uh, mute. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. All right. Now we're all set for what we needed to do here today. Like I said, a very quick hearing. Uh, you will get new notice of the next hearing. That's usually always Fridays at 1 p.m. because it will be a regular uh, landlord tenant hearing back in front of the district court judges. Like I said, you'll get new notice. It will be a different Zoom number, so please pay attention to that. Uh, if you come to my room next time, you'd actually be in the wrong room. Uh, but with that, I can go ahead and release both of you. You are all set. Thank you. And we still have a few minutes here on your other one. Uh, Council, I'll pop you back over in the meeting. No problem, Your Honor. Thanks. Okay. Yes, I've got a packet of information. All right. So. This is file 220237GC, uh, it's uh, Burnett and Castron, um, and attorney is here for them, and then Ms. Taylor, you are here. Ms. Taylor, I, uh, we did receive a large package of information you sent to court, um, and so luckily the plaintiff is also physically here in the building, so I think I asked Mr. Burnett if he could just wanted to go over and pick that up. But the court's function here at a debtor exam, first and foremost, Ms. Taylor, is to take an affirmation from you. So if I could swear you in, you want to raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that you will truthfully and accurately answer any questions put to you by the plaintiff concerning your ability to pay the judgment in this case? I just want to make sure your audio is working. I heard you say something. I mean, I saw you say something, but I didn't hear you. Okay, your, your volume might not be up. So you're gonna wanna turn that up before I put you into a, a, a breakout room with Mr. Burnett so that we know he'd be able to hear you. 
Yeah, see, I'm not getting any audio. That usually just means your volume might be turned down. Now, so other thing we can do is if you want to uh, call in on telephone, it's more important that we hear you than we see you. Or if you even want to open up the chat and type your phone number in, I can give that phone number to Mr. Burnett. He can call you and then you can be talking to him in the breakout room. Here, I'll, uh, I'll open up chat to you. And now you should see that I sent you. Oh, there you go. All right. Let me. I'm going to uh, call you real quick here from court just to make sure that we're all on the same page of what's going to happen. Hello? Ah, there, I can hear you. All right. Uh, so um, you guys need to have a conversation. You don't need to do it in front of me. So normally what I do is pop you into a breakout room. Uh, and it's great that you guys can see each other, but I'm not sure that's going to do you much good if your um, audio is not working. So what I would propose to do is I'll give uh, Mr. Burnett this same phone number. Instead of me calling you, he can call you, and then you'll be looking at talking at the same time. All right? Okay. So, Mr. Burnett, are you ready to write a phone number down? I am. It's two six. Very good. And so, what the, I'm gonna, oh, I'm sorry. What I'm going to do here is um, open up a breakout room, and then you guys will see each other in the breakout room. But it might take Mr. Burnett calling you uh, to be able to hear each other talking. And uh, you don't need to come back over here. When you guys are done, you're all set, all right? All right, thank um, you so much. Mr. Norbeck? Uh-huh. Would you please swear in Ms. Taylor? I, I did. Oh, you did. Okay, very good. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you guys should see the option to join now. Ms. Taylor, I'm going to hang up with you on the telephone. All right, I am out of plaintiffs, so I'm, or I mean uh, defendants, so I'm just going to call these last two. File 220827SC, this is Jomar Properties versus one David Moss. Yes, Your Honor. And let me just look to see. Uh, this was for show cause. All right, so here at show cause, you are here. No defendant. And so we will put out a bench warrant. Can you tell me, ballpark, sir, how much this judgment was for? Uh, the initial judgment was for $4,446.88. And then I have to figure out how I add fees onto that for like this is the third time that we've attempted to collect money from him. All right. So we will put out a bench warrant uh, for him on this case if he gets picked up and chooses to pay bond, so he's not sitting around in jail, that can be released to you as at least some sort of partial uh, uh, damages there. But we're all set for what we can do here today. I'm gonna go ahead and release you. Perfect, thank you, Your Honor. All right, and next 231511SC, this is uh, Wilmers versus uh, Katie Moon. Yes, Your Honor. And this was for debtor exam. So on this, 
let's check here. Subpoena was issued. All right, so on this, in other words, what we're putting is you're here and that defendant failed to appear. And now uh, we will set for what's called show cause. So here's the difference. I'll explain to you because I'm assuming you don't do this too often. Uh, no. <laughs> debtor exam is because you wanted her to be here. Uh, show cause is because court wants her to be here. So if she doesn't show up, again, if she shows up next time and you should show up next time too, then we just treat it like today and do a debtor's exam. If she shows up, doesn't show up again, then just like what you heard on the last case, we'll put a warrant out. Uh, it has a little more teeth because now the court is the one that she didn't show up for. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So you're all set for today. I'm going to go ahead and release you and then just watch mail uh, to see if this is up again when it's up again. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, on telephone, what's your name, please? My name is Bianca Adams. Okay, I'm going to pop you back. Oh, oh, did you say Bianca? Yes. Oh, okay, I can see you. <laughs> it is more important that we hear you, so you might as well just stop on the Zoom, but stay on the phone. Uh, okay. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to pop you back over in the waiting room. I'll bring you back over when it's time. Okay, thank you. 